Hi everyone and welcome to my guide for the reworked inner monk. This set has been completely changed and is now based on mystic allies as your main source of damage and it has been thrown straight into S tier as one of the best builds in the game. This can do 150 solo on the high end, it is uh, one of the best solo farmers as well and also has decent rift guarding killing abilities and is also most likely going to be the best build in bounties from now on. In fact, I've already made a video dedicated to the bounty setup because it's a bit different from the rest, but I'm gonna mention it here quickly. And here I mostly wanna talk about the solo pushing and the different speed variations. What you need to know is there are two different variations possible. One is with the water allies and one with the fire allies, and they work quite a bit differently. In general, you want to just move around fast, attack enemies to produce more mystic allies, which come from your inner six piece bonus, you can have up to 10 allies and then you want to press a missing ally button with fire for the big explosion or with water to transform them into their waveform so they continuously deal damage to everything around you and freeze enemies. This is especially used in farming. In pushing it is definitely the way to go with fire because you have this big burst potential where you potentially one shot elite packs even on the higher GR tiers. The area of effect is not very large, so a lot of damage is concentrated in the very small area, and especially when there's only one target, you have all your mystic allies running into them and completely annihilating stuff. Even so, you can also farm with the fire allies at a pretty decent pace, so if you have a lot of cooldown reduction in something like Messerschmitt's Reaver and maybe even in Geom, you can definitely uh, use your fire allies often enough that the high cooldown won't really matter. So in speed GRs, they kind of even out with probably a slight advantage of fire when you do it very well and water is just really easy, very smooth, you don't have to do much or worry about much and you get almost the same results. So let's jump into the setup here. In season 24, you can get ethereal items, which actually changes the setup quite significantly. In fact, Inas Monk is extremely strong next season and it is one of the builds that benefits the least from ethereal items because usually you have the Shenlong weapons or the Daibo that both give you pretty strong bonuses for uh, any monk build especially one that is focused on missing allies when you have the Daibo as well. So this is typically how you do non-season farming but the ethereals are stronger but simply not by very much. So after season 24 ends this build will be probably one of the top dogs in the entire game. First and foremost in your setup you're gonna have the inner set which gives you 30,000% mystic ally damage and a bunch of other small bonuses like you get all base mantras and they're all doubled and also the mystic ally effects and they're all doubled as well. So this is pretty neat, gives you some extra life, some extra life regen, it gets a bit of like additive damage, also a bit of all res and these kind of things so you don't really have to worry much about it. You are not really super tanky but you are definitely fine most of the time and it's not like a squishy setup anyway. The two key items that work with this build are the reworked Crudus Boots, which gives you a 200% damage increase for your mystic allies and allows them to attack with their active forms longer. Because your mystic allies last 15 seconds, so they essentially stay in the wave form the entire time. You can actually see here with the water allies that some of them are not transformed into a wave. This is because they time out while being in a wave and then you summon new ones and you have to press missing allies again. So you have to be aware of this in that setup that your missing allies can actually just AFK sometimes and you don't want to just mash your missing ally button all the time. You just want to make sure that whenever there's few of them you press the button again to make them all transform. The second core item here is the bindings of the lesser gods which again gives you a 200% damage bonus and a times 5 of that for your fire allies. So they do massive fire explosions and it makes it so that they, the two setups kind of even out in farming but fire definitely wins in pushing because of this huge burst damage. But you need to hit enemies with your cyclone strike to activate this bracer. So this is why cyclone strike is included. It is very useful for grouping up enemies in general and in this case also to activate this damage buff which makes it so that you have a very focused area of effect where most of the damage is done like right around yourself even when you have this water ally set up. But for example for the 16 or low GRs up to like 90 or 100 or so you don't necessarily need to cycle and strike everything to get this buff and even with the water allies they will just like go around and kill stuff somewhere at the edge of the screen and you're gonna be okay. 
Now, aside from the Cyclone Strike and the Mystic Ally on your bar, you don't actually need a lot of skills necessarily. Usually you have Dashing Strike for the mobility, you have Serenity for the Im immunity to survive and maybe keep up the scores and speedruns. And for example, here's something like Inner Sanctuary that can be used in solo pushing just to make it easier for you to stack up your Endless Walk set and stand still while tanking enemy hits. There are quite some variations here that you can try and see for yourself. For example, there are some versions with conventional elements. There's even one with uh, Zodiac where you just stack a lot of cooldown reduction and try to get as many fire ally explosions as possible. So this could also be very competitive. And there's also different variations where you have, for example, focus and restraint with a squirrel's necklace, especially in speed farming. This is kind of the way to go because you can't really stack up your endless walk very much. You don't necessarily have to go with the all gold set. You can also choose to drop it and just go with a lot of damage reduction. So there's Spirit Guards, 60% damage reduction, and there's also the Defavorite Soli Loki for another 50% damage reduction. So the all gold setup is kind of the greedy version, which will be used most of the time on the high end of the leaderboards and for farming, but you can definitely make it much easier on yourself, dropping down two or three tiers in damage, and you're gonna be basically immortal. Now, what you need to know about the attack speed scaling for this build, this is a pet build, and the Mystic Allies scale the damage with your attack speed. This is also the reason why you have Flying Dragon in the setup. Essentially, you want to keep this up as much as possible by attacking really quickly. In speedruns, you can also go without it with uh, Echoing Fury, for example, and uh, maybe in Geom in your offhand. So this is also a very nice way to make it smooth and give you extra damage. But in general, attack speed is a pretty good start. So is Mystic Ally damage and also area damage for the Water Ally only. The fire ally does not work with air damage, so something to be careful about. You don't want to stack it on any items when you're pushing with fire. Other than that, a bit of cooldown reduction is fine, but not really required. Mostly you can go with physical damage or with attack speed, and this will boost the damage the most. Equally, because of the pet mechanics of the mystic allies, you can go with Enforcer here as your main gem. There's also Bane of Trapped and for example, Bane of the Stricken in solo pushing. In G16, for example, this will be replaced with something like Boon of the Hoarder, and you can even go with a uh, Molten Wildebeest Gizzard to protect your Squirt's Necklace when you're doing speedruns, for example. And theoretically, you can even run with a Gogo or Swiftness, especially in this mentioned Zodiac setup where you want to stack all the cooldown reduction possible. So if you want to take a close look at the exact stat priorities, you can go check out the Defeat Banner. There's all the different variations here. There's also the non-season variations that might be important at a later point or as long as you haven't found a good ethereal. So it can definitely happen that you find a good Daibo or you find good Shenlong's weapons before you get a decent ethereal and you want to play this non-season version anyway because they are actually fairly close. The good thing about the ethereals is that you can replace the Shenlong set to get actually two weapon powers. So one would be the Furnace if you get either Furnace or Flying Dragon on your ethereal and you can cube the other two in a weapon and you can get the Crystal Fist for 50% damage reduction. So this is extremely useful. For the Ethereals themselves, you want to go with the Bartok's Cutthroat when you're pushing and the Jade Talon when you're farming. So Bartok's has this stacking damage effect that is extremely useful because you have very high attack speed. So you can essentially just punch into an enemy for like a second or two and you're gonna stack this up to basically full. Keep in mind this only works on one target at a time, similar to Bane of Stricken. So you have to switch targets all the time to actually stack it up on the right targets. So especially when you engage like a blue pack or a yellow or on the boss, uh, do you want to make sure that you keep attacking into this a little bit as much as possible before you do your fire ally explosion. The J Talon is uh, just a straight damage buff. So it gives you extra attack speed. It gives you some other nice stats, very useful. And it also has this life per hit, which you definitely want to have at least one source of. So all the Monk Ethereals have that. If you don't have the Ethereal, make sure that you get at least one weapon or even the Bracers. For your passives, you usually want to go with Beacon of Etar, lots of cooldown reduction. There's also Seize Initiative, which scales your damage from your Mystic Allies. So this is very useful. There's also something like Relentless Assault, very nice for the Water Allies, especially because they proc it themselves with their own attacks and it's always going to be up. And this is a multiplicative bonus. And there's, for example, also something like Unity. Additive damage buffs are not really that crazy in the setup because you have quite a lot from your own buffs, but um, it is definitely useful, but you can definitely go with some defensive passives there as well. There's Harmony, there's Near Death Experience, there's even Sixth Sense if you want, or Resolve. So you can go quite tanky. 
Lastly, a quick look at the bounty setup. I already have a guide specifically for this setup, so I'm just gonna highlight it quickly. You have the Ring of Royal Granger to combine the inner 6-piece with the Raymond 4-piece. This allows you to infinitely dash around as long as you have enough spirit. So you try to stack up as much as cooldown and resource cost reduction as possible. This is T16, you don't really need a lot of damage stats and you're just gonna blast away through the bounties with the water allies. It's a very cool, very simple setup, extremely mobile and it doesn't need any gear swapping like for example the Wrath of Light Monk or the Mullishot Demon Hunter. So this is very nice and it will be a very smooth farming experience although it is a little bit squishy so something to be aware about. This is about it for the setups for the gameplay. I have mentioned the water allies is very simple. I wouldn't really recommend pushing with water ally it is simply not really that strong despite working with air damage. It's mostly a farming setup and fire is the way to go. So here you want to make sure that you do a cyclone strike before you fire COE and then press mystic ally to go boom. You have to be a bit mindful about the positioning of your fire allies so you want to maybe dash around a little bit to make them teleport to you because you uh, want to make sure that they hit the right targets and not something outside of the pool. Other than that, you want to stand still as much as possible before you boom. So before cy fire cycle on your COE, you want to maybe stand still, stack up your way of the 100 fist and simulation for the extra additive damage buff, and then also use the inner sanctuary so that you can stand still and not die. Serenity can also be used whenever needed. For example, I like to use it at the end of the inner sanctuary. So I try to tank stuff a little bit. And then as the endless walk goes to full damage bonus instead of damage reduction, I press Serenity so that I have it active for most of the time in the fire COE and I'm completely protected from all damage. And that's about it. So you rinse and repeat. Since this is not an air damage build, you don't really have to make these super large pulls. In fact, it's actually sometimes not that great to have these large pulls because of the Mystic Ally AI, but it has been improved a bit and it should not really be such a big issue anymore. And with this, we conclude the guide. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with the reworked Inner Monk. Personally, I'm very excited to play this. I think it's a very cool rework. It's going to be very fun. And especially on non-season or when season 24 ends and the builds will balance out a bit between Wave of Light and Inners, you're going to have an insane powerhouse of a build that will probably end up being one of the best solo builds and best farming builds. So I'm very excited for that as well. Hope you liked the video and I'll see you guys next time.